I think uh, since the last two hours we did this <coughs> the issue of uh, demographics and its history and I don't want to repeat it. So mainly we've discussed the causes. I just want to touch, uh, you know, solution, how the Western policy makers should go about it and are they doing it? So maybe we can divert the, uh, you know, discussion onto that. I'll just highlight two points. Uh, one is if uh, demographics is now the fundamental challenge, there's got to be, you know, some effort to uh, address that. So basic bottom line should be to actually rebuild the family system. <clears throat> uh, I think that's a very natural process, especially for white communities. Now, are they doing it? That's a question. On one side, there is a call for family and culture in white communities. Even in North America, I think it became a debate in elections and in Europe also there are calls even in so many other Western countries. But are you doing it? For instance, the LGBT and all that debate, where are you putting your kids in future? Are they going to move to a family unit or not? So there's one dichotomy. Then you come to, as I mentioned, the creative chaos uh, surrounding Europe, North America, uh, North Africa, MENA region, Ukraine, Middle East, created, you know, this, I think last two decades were disrupted by so-called war and terror and later on springs and all that. So this created a mass migration across the Mediterranean and now Ukrainians are also there. And then there's a B line, you know, so if somebody is moving across Mediterranean boats, you have, you know, Afghanis and Pakistanis and and so many others in Bangladesh is also moving. So basically, you are not helping to solve the fundamental issue, and that is demographics. And I think uh, CFL is right. I have done also some study. People uh, call Europe as Eurasia in 2050. So this is the because the demographic trends, I said that Asia generally is like this, and West is like that. Uh, so you can study that. So maybe it appears like they are at 70 or 75 percent. But if you look at the way uh, the fertility rates in, let's say, non-white communities, definitely it is better. So gradually, and then there's always, uh, you know, a Rubicon, you cross it and then it starts sliding down very fast. You know, in Utoya, Mr. Bevering Bavik, or what was his name, he went on a rampage of killing kids and he said 20, uh, 85 will be the turning point. So I don't know what was that solution. Basically, you felt the pressure of this non-immigrant, uh, non-white population. I'll, I'll talk of another uh, issue is of surrogacy. This was again tried, uh, and I don't know, it's still functioning. Surrogacy was tried by a lot of Western countries, and it was very popular in India. And it created its own social problem. For instance, there's a white guy, and there is a white uh, lady, and let's say they are beyond 40 years, they want to have kids, they will go to India, Hire, uh, it was known as renting a home, and uh, they would hire a lady because there are poor people, and the kid will be born through an egg and a sperm from this couple, and maybe uh, the sperm doesn't belong to that very couple also. So you had a biological mother, you had a physical mother, you had a biological father and a physical father, and a virtual mother and a virtual father. Imagine this guy growing up after 20 years, and he has uh, six or seven parents. So, so these are, I think. Very, very, uh, I would say, uh, artificial solution. Main thing is that we have to get back to family units. For that, it requires, because it's very difficult to turn this uh, Generation X uh, into a family unit because the way things have gone, probably they're not ready to buy, even if their parents are buying. So this is fundamental question. Demographic, we have discussed why it happened, why there were so many South Asians. I know there are, uh, I think, uh, some uh, 100,000, uh, I don't know, 400,000, 500,000, maybe I think 1 million Pakistanis in, and you are right, Bradford is known as many Pakistan. And same is true, there are communities in US, uh, in the West, I know in Scandinavia, there are a lot of South Asia. This is not because of, you know, uh, the immigrants wanting it on their own. There was a demand by the corporate West to run their workshops and their agriculture field. So one was, of course, the natural process in the 60s, that you had, like 24-7, I mentioned, in UK, there was no concept of 24-7 work in the corporate sector. The South Asia, the Pakistanis, Bangladeshi, and the Indian, which brought it because you had a lot of kids and you could work for, you know, in three shifts. Now comes, you know, the destabilization of area around the Mediterranean. <coughs> it has physically, why, why it was, why Libya was, let's say, destroyed, why Iraq was destroyed. It would definitely create, you know, more image. So one is that you have a demographic problem and now you are accentuating it. And I think uh, Paul was right, or somebody mentioned that probably the corporate West wants it that way. 
that this is another way of getting cheap labor and i don't know how the ukrainian immigrants are going to be settled in europe till the war ends so why couldn't you have more peaceful world instead of and what have basically these new cons gained out of it have they uh, you know improved the economy of europe have they improved the issue of migration uh, have they um, improved the issue of demographics which is now becoming you know very very critical and i think i'll go with cfl i think uh, by 2070 i think there is a crossover that you will have definitely more migrants than the whites maybe euro will be like 60% whites imagine the political pressure the social pressure like you have a indian prime minister in uk may you may say it is part of a democratic system but definitely this is this why the talk of white shift there is a book on white shift and uh, there is a lot of debate i think there is also talk of uh, this uh, cosmopolitan uh, you know citizen i think pov was mentioned because now this is how the system can function So there are very very complicated problem on one side you have asia and uh, you know middle east and africa with the bubbling youth like pakistan median age is 25 years 24 years india may be 26 bangladesh is 25 middle east is 25 and uh, as pat bishanan said that in next 30 years the labor the engineer the carpenters the agriculture guys and maybe the lower cadre will come from asia because that's how the states function so these are i think what you see is all symptoms or i would say the reaction or the result of what is happening so i think uh, my last point would be address the basic issue of demographic and that is i think I, like chinese are trying to do it despite they are well off but still they feel it that one side policy is not work so again there is a, demo, a demographic pressure so now they are lying maybe two or three kids so that they can their future they can actually run china on their own and i have given example of model of middle east uae one is to 30 one arab 30 immigrants still they are functioning there are systems so i think these are some of the quick points we can always discuss you know the tensions uh, that are created because of these rights these are really condemnable and nobody supports anyone who lives in another country he should behave uh, but it's very difficult to you know create a melting pot and thank you very much